It's been almost six years since GTA Online came out, and honestly, it's sort of making me reconsider what I'm doing with my life, but, you know. What is up, guys? I'm the Gaming Gorilla, and over the years of GTA Online being out, we've had a hell of a lot of stuff added into the game, and now that the casino and penthouses are out, that pretty much marks the end of all the properties we'll be getting in GTA 5 Online. So today, we're going to go over every type of significant property in the game and rank them in terms of value for money and return on investment. Hopefully so that you guys can make a decision on what businesses to buy first, because there's still a lot of new players still flooding into GTA, even right now. So I hope you noobs find this useful. Or for us veterans that are watching, just for the fun of it, because why not? And look, I want to start off by saying that there's a lot of things that are going to go into buying each individual property, and you might not even want to buy the properties that I recommend. But what I'm going to do is hopefully provide you with all the info you need to make your own decision based off your playstyle or interests. And then at the end, I'll tell you guys what order I would buy the businesses in if I was just starting out today, so stick around for that. And some of these businesses are getting pretty expensive, so if you're looking for a little bit of a head start, I'm doing a great white shark card giveaway to celebrate reaching 500 subs on the channel. So make sure to enter that one, that's in the description below. We're still a pretty small channel, so if you enter, you've got a pretty good chance at winning, so don't forget to do that. Alright, so let's jump straight into it, and we'll start with the brand new penthouse, starting off with a bang. Penthouse has just launched in GTA with the casino update not long ago, and on top of being really cool and a cool thing to show off to your friends, they do actually provide some return on investment as well. Once you buy a master penthouse, you can host the casino story missions, and once all of the first time mission bonuses are completed, you'll end up with over a million dollars from it. On top of that, if you host them all in order, you'll get the NS Paragon R armored and weaponized sports car which by itself is normally around a million dollars. After that though, there isn't really any potential to earn any more money, but there are some cool things to do like throw parties and fast travel around the map, as well as requesting casino work and whatnot. And the base master penthouse, which is all you need to get the rewards, is $1.5 million. So if we're going to rank this by cost and return on investment, I'll give it a 4 out of 10. You will make your money back in a couple hours, but after that, there really isn't any opportunity to make more money. Alright, so that's the newest property in the game. Let's actually take it all the way back to 2013 and talk about the oldest properties in the game. And those are the high-end apartments. And the main reason this property has any value at all is the fact that it actually allows you to start heists. And for beginners looking to get started and understand what GTA is all about, this is a great place to start. Now, I don't take credit for these figures. There's people that are way better at calculating this than me, but if you finish all of the heists and take a 40% cut of the final heist missions, plus taking into consideration that you'll get your first time completion bonuses and your bonus for completing all of the heists in order, you'll end up making a $2.5 million profit. And while these heists are really fun and even better with friends, trust me, they will take a long time to complete. These apartments start as low as $200,000, and also come with 10 car garages, so all things considered, for making money, the high end apartments are about a 6 out of 10. The first time bonuses are great, but after that, the money making opportunities really die down. Sticking with the theme of heists, let's move on to the facilities. And these facilities are what you need to start the doomsday heists. Just like the previous heists, make sure you do these in order because you'll get bonuses for doing that. And what makes these heists so great is that they can actually be completed with two people instead of four. So if you're looking to make the most money possible, do them with only two people so you can get a bigger cut of the final profit. If you complete all of the heists with two people and take 60% of the cut, of course taking into account the first time bonuses again, you're looking at a $2.5 million profit. If you do the heists with four players on the other hand, you should be taking a 40% cut. And after finishing all the heists then, you'll earn $1.7 million. So I definitely recommend doing it with two people. It will be a lot harder, especially if you're doing it on hard difficulty, which you should be doing, but it's worth it in the end. As for which facility to buy, please don't do what I did and buy the one at the top of the map in Polito Bay. Yes, I know it's the cheapest one, but you have to trust me. Driving up and back for every single mission is so bad, dude, don't do it. And in GTA, of course, time is money. So do yourself a favor and buy one in Sandy Shores or on the right side of the map. These will cost about $2 million plus, depending on which one you buy. 
But if you're gonna run these heists more than once, which I do recommend, it's more than worth it, trust me. So as for return on investment, I'll give these a 7 out of 10. It is very time consuming, but you can do it with friends, which makes it better. And on top of that, you can do it while your other businesses are making money for you in the background. All right, let's move over to probably the biggest flex in the game right now, and that's the VIP yacht. And there's not too much to say about these bad boys. It's the ultimate power move to make anyone who doesn't have one feel completely insignificant. But I mean, other than pride, there isn't really much these yachts offer, at least in terms of making money. These things can cost up to $10 million if you fully max them out with customization and don't offer any way to get you money. So these are a 1 out of 10. Alright, let's move on to the biker businesses. And in order to actually buy any of the drug factories, you'll need to be a motorcycle club president. And that requires you to buy an MC club. And as you can see on the screen, like, they're pretty cool, but there's really not that much to do there. And honestly, you probably won't ever go there except to buy more businesses. So just buy the cheapest one, and that's here for $200,000. Now, I made a few mistakes when buying these businesses, I'm not gonna lie, but that means that I'll be able to tell you guys what not to do. I made the mistake of buying a weed factory first, and weed factories can definitely be a good source of income eventually, but it's not the first one you want to get. These things are expensive, man, but they will give you your money back in time if you do them right. And it's best to buy the staff and equipment upgrades for all of them, or else you're really going to struggle to make a profit. Plus, you'll need to put in a lot more work. So I'm going to start off by saying we're not even going to cover the document forgery office, okay? Don't buy it, it's just not worth it. So we'll move on to weed, since we were just talking about it. And with all of the upgrades, if you sell weed in the remote location, which will give you 50% more money, so do that every time for every business, you'll end up getting $38.4,000 on average per hour. And I did the math for you guys, if you buy the cheapest weed factory, which is $715,000, it'll end up costing just over $1.9 million all up which at the rate of $38,000 per hour will take 51 hours to break even on. And yeah, that's a really, really long time, but just keep in mind that this will be happening in the background while you can do other stuff, and all you have to do is resupply it every few hours. So we'll give this one a 5.5 or 6 out of 10. Don't buy it first like I did, but down the road, it can make you some money. Next, we'll go over to the counterfeit cash business. And keep in mind, again, all of these figures are with the purchased business upgrades, as well as taking into consideration the cost of purchased supplies. So if you want to steal the supplies, you will have better profit margins, but of course that means more work. So that's up to you. Per hour here, you'll earn $72,000. And with the cost of the cheapest business and upgrades, that'll take you 27.75 hours to earn back. After that, it's smooth sailing. So this one's going to be a 7 out of 10. Meth labs are the most expensive business to start up, but again, the money is good with 67.8 thousand per hour, which after the purchases will take 34 and a half hours to break even on. Then again, smooth sailing from there. This one's a 7 out of 10 as well. And that leads us to cocaine. This is probably the one you're going to want to buy first, and yes, it is expensive, but you'll be getting $93,000 per hour. And that's only going to take you 24.7 hours to pay off. Then you'll be raking in the money. This one's a 9 out of 10. This is really good, and it should be the first biker business you buy. All right, let's talk about the CEO office. And this office is going to allow you to buy vehicle and crate warehouses and import or source and export and sell different products. But of course, you'll need the office first. And you're going to want to get the cheapest one because honestly, it's in a pretty good location and it's only $1 million. When looking at warehouses, Crate warehouses are okay and money can be earned, but what we're going to look at is the vehicle warehouse, and the cheapest one is $1.5 million. And the way we're going to be making money from this is, uh, I guess it's kind of a glitch, but not really. The warehouse has 40 car spots, and you can source standard range, mid range, and high end cars, but you can't choose which one. And what you're going to want to do is source standard and mid range cars, but don't sell them. You want to get to the point where your warehouse is full with mostly mid-range and standard range cars, and that's sort of going to trick the game into only allowing you to source high-end cars from that point on. And then what you do is you just sell those high-end cars after you source them, and rinse and repeat. It's important to note that this is going to take a lot of time, and that's something that people kind of just skip over. And on top of that, this is all active work, where some businesses like the biker businesses, nightclub and bunker are completely passive and require pretty much no work. 
So this business won't make any money unless you dedicate hours and hours to source cars. So it takes a certain type of player to want to do this. In terms of value, I'll give the warehouses and CEO office an 8 out of 10, because a lot of money can be made, but man, that's a lot of work. Moving over to the bunker, the bunker is great, and honestly, this is one of my favourite businesses to run because it's so easy and it gets you a lot of money. And for a lot of players, I'd probably recommend getting this as one of your first official businesses. And there's a few bunkers to choose from, but from experience, please, again, like the facilities, don't buy the one in Polito Bay. I know it's the cheapest, but my friend has that bunker and it just causes so many problems when we're trying to do cell missions, because it is so far away. Especially when you're driving slow vehicles, like some of the delivery vehicles. Personally, I chose the bunker next to Fort Zancudo because of the price. And again, I wouldn't really recommend it because it's so far away from everything, but it is better than the Polito Bay one. If you can, it's definitely worthwhile in investing a bit more money to either buy the Chumash bunker on the left of the city, or one of the ones in Sandy Shores, if that's where your other businesses are. And trust me, you'll thank yourself for it in the long run. As for costs, you're looking at a 1.6 to 2 million dollar price tag, plus the equipment and staff upgrades which are 1.15 million and 598,000 respectively. And these upgrades again are really important, but not as vital as the biker business upgrade in my opinion, because even without these upgrades you'll still make a decent profit without them. Without the upgrades you'll get $30,000 worth of stock per hour and with them you'll get $60,000. So if you can buy the upgrades, definitely do that. What I like so much about the bunkers is that the missions are just a lot better than the drug business missions. And both sell and resupply missions, that is. But we're ranking the businesses by money earned and value for money, and this one's gonna get an 8 out of 10. Great money, easy to run, and fun to do. Alright, let's talk about the hangars, and the hangars, there's two different locations. There's the Los Santos International Airport and Fort Zancudo. And the ones at the airport are a lot cheaper, and yeah, it looks like it's a good location, but again, it's a long way away from all of the source missions and cell missions. So if you can save up for it, I definitely recommend getting one in Fort Zancudo. They can be as cheap as $2 million. And another cool thing that it actually does is it allows you to fly over Fort Zancudo without getting a wanted level. Which can be pretty useful, as you can imagine. On top of that, these hangars give you a place to store your aircraft, which is great as well. But this isn't a business to do solo. And that's because when you do solo missions, you can only source one crate at a time. This business works very similarly to the CEO crates. And like we said, it's just not as good as the vehicle sourcing that you can do with the CEO office. So there is money to be made here, but like the CEO stuff, it's not passive and it's going to require a lot of work. So I wouldn't recommend this for most players. So we'll give this business a 6 out of 10. You will make your money back, but expect to grind and grind and grind. Alright, the last business we'll go over is the nightclub, and oh boy, this is the easiest business ever to run. But you'll want to buy it last, and here's why. The nightclub itself can earn you money, and if you've got absolutely nothing to do, you can focus on keeping the popularity up by doing missions to earn money that way. But the way you're going to earn some real money is through the underground warehouse. The way the warehouse works is through technicians acquiring stock, and each of these technicians will cost money to buy. There's seven different possible goods to acquire, but you can only buy five technicians, so you want to pick the five highest earning goods. But in order to actually acquire these goods, you'll need to own the respective business. So for example, printing and copying is the document forgery, and if you don't own a document forgery office, you can't acquire this type of stock. So that's why you want to get the nightclub last, because you can only earn money off it if you actually have the other businesses. And I also hear this a lot of time with people getting confused, thinking that this takes stock away from their cocaine labs and whatnot, and that they can just stop running those businesses. And that's not true. This business requires you to own other businesses, but they're still completely independent from each other. So don't get that confused. Now, what's so great about the nightclub warehouse is that you don't have to steal or buy supplies. Your technicians are going to take care of all of that, and all you have to do is just wait till the stock rises up and then sell it. Easy. And this table shows how much each type of stock will earn per hour, so assign your technicians accordingly. As for the costs, nightclubs are maybe the most expensive business all up. To buy one, you're looking at between 1 and 1.7 million dollars, depending on location. The further north your nightclub is, the better. Because you'll be selling in Sandy Shores, so the further south you are, the higher chance you're going to get killed on the way to sell it. 
The equipment upgrade is just over $1.4 million, and there's no staff upgrade for the warehouse, so you'll actually pay money for each individual technician instead. And they're gonna cost a few hundred thousand dollars each, so keep that in mind. And there's also actually storage upgrades to buy, which is important as well if you don't want to have to sell your product every few hours. For all five floors of storage, it's gonna cost you four million bucks. But after that, this is the easiest business ever to run. So obviously it's very, very expensive, but if you can afford it, it's the most passive business in the game, and you can literally just leave it there for like a week and then sell it. So for convenience and money as well, it's a 9 out of 10, but make sure this is the last business you buy. So that's all of the businesses, and I said at the start I'd give you my opinion on which order to buy them in. And personally, if you haven't done the heists before, I'd recommend buying a high-end apartment and facility just for the fact that they're incredibly fun. But in terms of money, I'd recommend getting a bunker first, actually, because even without the upgrades, you'll still earn decent money. And then with the money earned from that, I would recommend buying a cocaine lockup, buy those upgrades, then look at a cash factory. And the reason I recommend investing in these passive businesses first is because when you invest in something like a vehicle warehouse, that's going to take up a lot of your time in the game. And a lot of these guides are for people like beginners who don't have these businesses, and I just don't like the idea of sort of cornering yourself into only doing those missions, because GTA is such a big game and there's so much to do, and you don't just want to spend your time sourcing vehicles all day. After buying the cash factory, it's up to you, depending on your playstyle, if you want to keep investing in passive businesses businesses, or save up for the CEO office and vehicle warehouse. After that, invest in your nightclub and you'll be set right up until GTA 6. So I hope that helped guys, and if you enjoyed the video, a like would be greatly appreciated. And make sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this one. Don't forget about that shark card giveaway, link is in the description, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace!